Hey, hey, welcome to the Bad Belly. I'm Charlotte. Thanks for joining me for my second video. I know that I told you last time that today we would be talking about my dietary trifecta of doom, but I have changed my mind. Instead, we are just going to get the fat file over and done with. That's the plan. Let's just do it. I will put it out there and then it's done and I don't have to worry about it anymore. I have been big boned, heavy set, chubby, fat, overweight. Uh, I have been obese. I've been morbidly obese. When I hit my all time high BMI of 62%, I made it into the super morbidly obese category. Uh, that's fantastic. I have also been a fat thin person. Um, yeah, that's, that's an actual real thing, promise. Um, whenever I have been uh, thin or a normal weight as an adult, I have always been a fat thin person. Um, I've never been healthy. I've never been fit. I've never had uh, the proper muscle to fat ratio. That's new. That's never, never quite been me. Um, in fact, even now, I'm still technically overweight. I have a half a percentage point to go before I'm in the normal range uh, for my weight. But um, the way things are going, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get there. Um, and before I hear about how obsessed I've become with numbers and counting and, and things like that, um, of course, I'm focused on the numbers. I'm super focused on the numbers because I have to be. That is what is going to get me healthy, that's what's going to keep me healthy, and that's what's going to keep me alive. So, um, I guess, yeah, I guess I have an unhealthy, healthy obsession with numbers. Um, and, you know, to be totally honest, I didn't know my current BMI until just a little bit ago when I, um, I Googled it for this so that I would know that's how I found out. I also wasn't sure if I'd ever technically been superly morbidly obese, so, or super morbidly obese. So I looked that up. Uh, yeah, sure was. Definitely, definitely at five foot two and 338 pounds, I was for sure superly, superly, well done. I was definitely super morbidly obese. Um, but yeah, so the BMI thing is new for me to know those numbers. Um, but that's really nothing once we start getting into what my day-to-day -day numbers look like. So on any given day, I know exactly how many grams of fat, fiber, sugar, calories, um, well, no grams and calories, but I know how many calories I've taken in. I know how many grams of carbohydrates I've taken in. I can tell you a nutritional breakdown of all those foods, how much vitamin A, how much calcium, how much vitamin, just everything. Um, and the only way actually that I'm able to do that so easily um, is through the MyFitnessPal app. It's amazing. If you've got dietary issues of any kind that you're having to track, um, even for a little bit, it's it's an absolutely wonderful thing to have. I used it years ago was how I, um, was how I got started, um, just to lose weight because it was such a way to police myself, I guess, so that I would know where I was specifically with calories, but also with things like fat. Um, but now that I need to know the particular nutrients and um, things like that, it's a it's a really good resource to have, and it's free. They have a premium part, but I've never used it, and I don't think you have to buy into it. I certainly haven't, and I've been using it for years. So my fitness pal, it's terrific if you've got a smartphone. I don't know if it'll work on a computer. I assume it's only for for smartphones. But anyway, something to look into. Um, so I guess if I'm going to lay it all out, I should just start. Um, I don't think I'd be considered a, an overweight kid now, but in the 80s, I definitely was. I was never like get on a talk show fat, but I was, I, I was just overweight. I was just like a normal, slightly overweight kid. Um, I hovered around a buck 55 for most of my teen time. And then I got super fat, like super fat. Between 1998 and 2003, I managed 
to um, get really big. Really, that was, yeah, I got super big. Um, but I was really happy. I was in a great relationship. Um, I had a good job in fast food. Uh, yeah, that did not, didn't help matters too, too much. Um, I pretty much ate whatever the fuck I wanted, whenever I wanted, and I didn't care at all. I just didn't give a shit. Um, there was not a health concern going on. I didn't have a thyroid condition or anything else happening that I can say caused me to get so big. I caused me to get so big. Um, I had horrible habits. I drank Coke the way you are supposed to drink water. And I mean that quite sincerely because I was drinking at least two liters of Coke a day. The first thing I would do in the morning would be to wake up and drink some Coke. It was not really good um, and really hard to kick. I should probably do a post on some point about how I got over my Coke habit because um, it took a while and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a lot of fun and it's still something that I feel like I could be battling if I wasn't on such a strict low FODMAP diet. I can't have high fructose corn syrup. Um, so Pepsi, my current pop of choice, is completely off the table, which is for sure a really good thing. Um, now I did have one medical thing. I had my birth control switched at one point and I gained 35 pounds in like five or six weeks. So there was that. And that was right at the beginning of me gaining a super big, heavy amount of weight. Um, but that's it. But really it's just, it was me. I was unhealthy. I had bad habits. I didn't give a shit. Um, yeah, bad choices. Not good. Okay. So in... 2003, I had my aha moment, not yeah, that term, but that's exactly what it was. Um, this is the really hard part that I was not looking forward to getting into, so we're just going to do it. So I was 24 years old, I weighed 320 pounds, I um, had just been sat down by Sean, who we'd been together at that point for six years, he sat me down, he'd never said a word about my weight in all this time, not a word, and um, he told me that he had seen me tying my shoes and that I had gotten winded and it scared him. So that was really, um, that was not my aha moment, but it was a moment nonetheless. Um, after that, I went for my annual physical, and <clears throat> ladies, every, well, everybody knows what happens at a woman's annual physical, so I'm up on the table and I'm in the stirrups, and there was a new intern, assistant, whatever, in there with my doctor, and it was a teaching moment. She had brought the wrong calipers, and I heard my doctor say to her that she would have to leave the room and go get a bigger set, um, because in patients who were this heavy, the smaller ones didn't work. Mm -hmm. And that was just, and I'm sorry, because I know I'm talking about my vagina, and that's not something that civilized people talk about, but here we are, folks. Um, it was just devastating to me to know that I was so fat that I couldn't even have an internal exam done the same way as a normal person. So I went home and I put on a shit ton of weight. That's how I got up to well, a shit ton. I put on another 18 pounds, which when you're over 300 pounds, what, what difference does another 18 make? But anyway, got up to 338 pounds and then that was it. I started coming back down. Um, by September of 2005, I was back down to my high school fight and weight of 155 pounds. It had taken me 26 months, but I'd lost uh, 183 pounds in 26 months, which I think is pretty good, pretty standard. I wasn't losing it too fast. You know, I get averages like a pound, a pound and a half a week, whatever, which is how you're supposed to do it. Um, but I did it exclusively through diet, no exercise, not a great way to do it, wouldn't recommend it, you know, go back to that whole fat, thin person thing, not smart, you really don't want to do it that way. Um, but I did it, and it was a damn good thing that I did, because that September we got into a car accident, it was a thing, um, I'm sure we'll, we'll rally back around to that. Um, but it, it was a thing. Um, by 2007, I was down to 137 pounds. Well, that's when I got married. That's how I know that. 
um, complications from the car accident. By 2009, I was down to my lowest adult weight, um, 125 pounds. Again, more complications um, from the car accident. By the time my firstborn son came along in 2013, I was back up to about 185 pounds. Um, I did what I always do when um, we lost the three pregnancies before him, and I ate the shit out of my feelings. I ate, um, and I was fine with that. And I'm still fine with that. Um, when I had my second son in 2015, I was sitting around I think about 220. And by the time I went in for Lugu's crash C-section, I was around 247. Fast forward five months later, coming out of the hospital, I was down 70 pounds. Um, fantastic. First two months home, I put about 20 back on. Fine with that too. And then, so I guess January, February-ish of 2017, I started trying to take it back off. I had been told by my doctor that um, being fat was very dangerous for my pancreas. And he would like to see me down, you know, back to that like 155 mark. Um, so I started working toward that. 20 days ago, I started the a very strict um, quad mass elimination diet at 146 pounds. Um, this morning I weighed in 136, but I lost the first six pounds in the first five days, um, which was a little bit scary. So I'm glad that uh, we've managed to taper that off pretty much completely. Um, so it's like less than a half a pound a day now, which is manageable because hopefully when I start reintroducing foods, I'll be able to put some of it back on. Um, I think it's really strange that I'm still technically overweight, but um, like I said, I think that'll probably change with the new resurgence because of the motorcycle, because of the FOD mapping. Um, and I know it's a total dick thing to complain about, you know, mm, poor me, I'm losing too much weight, I can't stop losing weight. Like, who complains about that? That's such a, a shitty thing to say. Um, but I do have to be careful because I can't lose too much too fast because, again, pancreas. Um, I can't stress out my organs. So hopefully I will be able to start um, reintroducing stuff and this will get a lot easier once I enter the challenge phase of the, uh, the FODMAP diet and then we'll learn whatever my new normal is going to be. I'm pretty excited for that part because I'm learning a lot so far. Anyway, thank you so much for coming along for the ride with me today. This is the fat file. I'm sure we'll be revisiting parts of it. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Find me on Facebook. There's a lot more information over there or on my Instagram, especially if you want to see the types of foods that I'm eating, recipes, that sort of thing. Anyway, have a great day. Bye-bye.